Leave it 5 one turn right heading 183. Episode 2 of the mini-series covering the Boeing 737 MAX incidents focuses on the attributing factors to the incidents. In other words, some of the causes that the committee's investigative team came to the conclusion of. If you haven't seen the first episode, which deals with the key background information, I'd highly recommend doing so before watching this one. That was published yesterday on the channel. Basically, getting onto the subject matter for today, the team investigating came to findings that there were five central themes that impacted the design, development, and overall certification of the Boeing 737 MAX program. You can now take the opportunity to have a quick stab at them in the comments below before I get into the first one. What's important to note is quite a few of these reasons I've already actually discussed in prior videos. Whether they were already pretty evident to the general public or whether they were more concealed, it's good to now go through a thorough investigation to what the findings were and of course what the five key central themes were. We begin with, I'd argue, the most obvious one and that's the faulty design of the aircraft itself. In addition, the report noted performance assumptions in the same points that will also be discussed. For any new aircraft, there's a thorough process to designing the said aircraft to ensure that not only is it safe to fly, but also that it is efficient and in addition, it is going to offer customers things that they will need. There's a lot to it. The MCAS is the first and really main faulty design part. As discussed in the first part of this mini-series, covering the report, MCAS is a software that forced the nose of the aircraft down when getting irregular readings from a single angle of attack sensor or AOA. Boeing, however, downplayed this fault, and as the report said itself, it, referring to Boeing, also expected that pilots who were largely unaware that the system existed would be able to mitigate any potential malfunction. The thing is, for something like MCAS to fly under the radar when, at the end of the day, it was a safety hazard, is something that is quite worrisome. Had Boeing classified MCAS originally as a safety critical system, then the FAA could have heavily tested it and maybe prevented what was to occur at the end of 2018 and the beginning of 2019. However, for MCAS, that's not the last you're going to hear of it. It's going to have its own episode in the coming days, where I'll centre the focus around the causes, the way it was downplayed, and a whole lot more. Moving on to the next point, though, which is the pressure of production. Having had the opportunity myself, which I'm very thankful for, to interview an employee who worked on the 737 MAX prior to the two incidences, one of the main things I gathered was that employees were heavily pressured to build these aircraft and get them out to start work on the next. And in turn, when rushing anything in life, the implications of doing so can be quite big, whether that's potentially missing specific parts or something else. Boeing and Airbus have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe for decades now constantly producing new aircraft to not just compete but also better themselves. And without one or the other, the aviation industry would not be the same, and that's a fact. However, with the Airbus A320, the 737 MAX's direct rival being delivered and attracting attention that did equate to orders, the committee noted that Boeing were financially pressured to compete and in turn did everything possible to cut costs, also adjust the schedule of the 737 MAX program and timeline to match the A320neos, and in doing so, it was found on multiple occasions that the goals Boeing had wanted to achieve meant that the safety of the type was put at risk and therefore all passengers put on board were also at risk. The next point though is Boeing's influence on the FAA, something that has also been discussed in a heavy capacity here on the channel since ET302 and also the FAA's actions. It was found quite scarily that on multiple occasions FAA officials documented examples where design approaches with the Boeing 737 MAX were not adequate enough. These design approaches did not comply with the regulations set out initially by the FAA. However, the FAA's management simply put them to the side and sided with Boeing on multiple occasions. In turn, these examples have heavily impacted the overall image the FAA pertains within the aviation industry. The final point is also still focused around the communication between Boeing and the FAA and is labelled in the report as conflicted representation. The committee noted that the current respect levels with Boeing from the FAA have caused multiple issues slipping through their fingers. In addition, direct communication between the two parties has not been at a rate that is acceptable nor clear enough and in turn specific things, like mentioned before, have slipped through the FAA. Once again, this has jeopardised the safety of the customers that choose to fly with the Boeing 737 MAX or book a flight and just so happen to be on board it. 
In the report itself, the committee said, In some instances, a Boeing AR raised concerns internally in 2016, but did not relay these issues to the FAA, and the concerns failed to result in adequate design changes. Some of the issues that were raised by the AR and not thoroughly investigated or dismissed by his Boeing employees, such as concerns about repetitive MCAS activation and the impact of faulty AOA data on MCAS, were actually the core contributing factors that led to the Lion Air and Ethiopian Airlines crashes more than two years later. This comes as employees at Boeing were reported to have been given special access to the FAA and were actually allowed to represent Boeing, yet still at this point did not disclose certain things. In fact, it was found that the committee also discovered that one AR who was aware that Boeing knowingly delivered aircraft with inoperable AOA disagree alerts to its customers in 2017 and 2018 took no action to inform the FAA. There were multiple other instances when this occurred, and in every single instance, it was evident that the aircraft manufacturer did not communicate correctly with the FAA. These are the five key posts or concerns or themes, pardon me, according to the committee's investigative team that led to the 737 MAX's ultimate demise with all playing a critical role. While there are likely other reasons on top of these, the ones I've mentioned have been determined to be the biggest and I would agree with them as these have been all areas with either questioned or believed to be one of the many reasons as to why the 737 MAX went down in a period of around six months especially when it was just certified to be safe to fly. In episode 3, I'll go further into the 737 MAX, so stay tuned. I'm specifically going to be focusing on the lies and deception from the FAA and the 737 MAX, really getting into a bigger, deeper dive on that final point I just made. So stay tuned. That will be published on the channel if all goes according to plan tomorrow at 6pm British Summer Time. Once again, despite the subject matter, I hope you have been enjoying and getting a better insight into the 737 MAX, and I will see you all next time.